Okay, before I get started quilting, I take my iron, I get it nice and hot, and I am going to warm up my quilt. What I'm doing is I'm warming up the fusible web. It's easier to sew through when it's warm. So every once in a while I'll stop and give it a little, a little press to warm up the glue, soften it. Now, this is why I like steam -a seam because that's, you can iron it over and over again. So to get ready to do Renegade Thread Play, I've put a jeans denim or a top stitch needle, and I start out with a size 8012. I have my free motion foot on, that has a little spring action here. I've snapped it onto my Bernina. I'm using my Sulky Rayon 30 weight thread, and I'm putting the same color in the bobbin that I will be using on top. And every time I change my thread on top, I will change and wind a new bobbin. And you can see I have pin basted my layers together on the outside of my flower. And to tack all the layers together so I can come in and color with the thread, I'm going to do a little, what I call, a stitch in the ditch. Now I roll up my quilt on this side so it will go easily under the arm of my sewing machine. And then I'm going to go down right in this area and I'm going to bring up my bottom thread. So I have both threads on top so I won't run over my threads. And I'm going to cut them and get them out of my way. And I have to take my shoe off when I do this. It's just a lot better to be barefoot. Okay, and I'm rolling up my work. And I'm going to start. Now, I like to have the needle down position so it'll hold my work. Remember, your hands are what are regulating your stitches. So I'm just going to go around the outside edge of the center of this flower now. Get your thread tails out of your way. Don't need to be making a mess with that. Okay? Now, if you can see, I am stitching right up against my green flower center. Not on it, but up against it. And what that's causing me to do, now here, I'm just going to go around this circle, and down, and I'm just going, I'm tacking all the layers together, and I could go a little faster. But I'm not trying to draw anything. I'm just trying to layer the top of the quilt through the batting to the backing. This will stabilize your work when you go to color. And change your hands. back to the beginning. I'm just going to drive up to the edge. Now I'm again stitching in the ditch around some of these pieces. Really I'm just traveling to the outside edge. And when you're up against, when you're doing a stitch in the ditch and your thread is right up against the edge of that piece, if your stitch was a, um, a little wonky, as I call it, it'll hide right in there. And then when you go to put the other threads on top, it'll all disappear. Okay, but I want to get to the outside edge of my flower. Okay, because now I'm going to tack down all these layers too. Okay, and if you can see, I'm just going around the outside edge, doing my stitch in the ditch all the way around the outside of these petals. Okay, this is the back of the quilt. And you can kind of see that I have lightly tacked down all three layers of the quilt before I get ready to come in and thread sketch on my petals and my leaves. This will hold it securely while I'm stitching. Okay, I'm getting ready to sew this part right here. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to warm up. I just brought my iron right over here and I'm warming up that petal so I can stitch. 
I always try and bring both of my threads to the top to get started. I'm going to take a few stitches and then I clip. Now you may notice that I don't have any gloves on. That's because they drive me crazy, but I do have a lickety grip on my hands that give me some control. This is the pedal that I'm going to work on. Okay, and so I'm going to first go out. And I'm going to go back. I know, it's really hard, isn't it? Let's try the other side. sound that you hear is normal because you're going through layers of fusible web. But do you see how curving my thread in the middle is making that petal look more round? And stop. Now watch how I cut my threads because this is fusible web. I lift up my presser foot. I lift up my needle all the way and I bring the work towards me. Okay. Then I pop the top thread. I didn't do a uh, back stitch, but I popped the top thread. And did you see the bobbin and the top thread came up all at once? And with these curved little snips, I snip it. And I've just snipped the top and the bobbin thread flush with the top of my work. Now, because it's fusible web, I'm going to take my iron and I'm going to steam this when I'm done. The steam will reactivate the glue. The glue sticks now to the thread. The thread is permanently embedded in your work. Uh-huh. Now, I dissect and analyze each petal individually. I figure out which petal I want to do next. Now let's do this one that has a lot of dark shadows on it and how would we attack a dark shadow. Well, I figure out where it would be the easiest place to start and I'm thinking right over here on the edge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and avoid the really dark, dark thread with this medium light purple. And I'm going to come back in and bring in some of that darker purple. Okay, but I may hit it. I may put a little bit of that color in there. And then over on this side with the pink, I'm going to bring that in, just kind of letting the colors tell me what to do. But I'm also following the shape of these. This gives me, the shapes I've cut, give me how I want to do my line. Okay, now I'm going into that darker purple, but I'm leaving some of it open. And then if you get scared again, you stop. If the needle is in the needle down position, your work isn't going anywhere, you can breathe, you can rethink where you want to go and start up again. I found a thread that I'd like to use for this shadow, but I don't have a bobbin, so I'll have to wind a bobbin of this thread. The stopping and starting to wind a bobbin 
has made me a more careful stitcher because I have to go slow and I have to think about where I'm going to go next with my thread. I am not a patient person, but this really, the winding of the bobbin has really um, been a blessing instead of a curse. I try to keep my hands as close together like an embroidery hoop. I find I have better control. Okay, and I'm going to start on the outer edge. In fact, I'm going right on my stitch in the ditch stitches from before. And I'm going to kind of bring some of that dark color here along that edge. I'm going to go down and come back up. And I'm going to go into the pink a little bit. got that side and I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up a, along this to come over onto this side. This is one petal here and if I outline it it'll separate those two petals that are made of the same color. So I'm going to go up here and first I have to find where the line is that separates them. Oh there it is. There we go. I'm going to stop. Can you see that? And I'm going to now adjust my hands and go around this side. Hear that song again? And maybe I want to make this little shadow a little bit darker, so I'm going to go back over it again. And we might bring in right in there a little more of that lavender. And boom. One of the favorite things I like to do are leaves. I'm going to show you how to do leaves. They are fun to do. Down and get my bobbin thread. <clears throat> Even though there's two colors in this leaf, I treat it all as one color. I'm going to remove my pen so I don't roll over it. So I treat the leaf all as one. Um, and I'm going to, to give the leaf dimension, first thing we do is I'm going to drive down to the point. Okay? And you don't want to do a straight line. No straight lines. No straight lines in nature. Okay? So we're going to do a curve line. I'm going to do a curve line. To the tip. Do you see that? Now, Now, I want to go up on this side making veins. Okay, and I'm going to kind of go along the edge and then up to the center line and make a vein. And then I'm going to curve it when I come down. Do you see how I'm curving these? right at the edge and it kind of makes the leaf look like it's cupping under by how you are sketching. Now that pin is getting close to causing an oopsie so I'm going to remove it. Okay then when I get up to the top here I'm going to drive down that center line again and making the middle st stem or vein look thicker. I'm going right next to the previous stitches. Okay, now I'm going to go up this side. This is the hard part because I'm right-handed. Going up on the, the left side is a little more difficult because you have to visualize it. You're making a V. And when I mean V, I mean right here, that's a V, right? Upside down V. And I'm done. And there is the leaf and the tendril on the back.